Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture of ROP206 microcontrollers with LAMP. This is the last part of the second lecture indeed. We are going to talk about the binary numbers and binary coding. When you want to use the binary coding, you, sh you should keep in mind that for coding we have a flexibility of the representation. It means that within certain constraints, which we are going to, to talk below, you can assign any binary combination, which we call as a code word, to any data, as long as data is uniquely encoded. Okay, so this is quite important. The data that we are talking should be uniquely encoded. You shouldn't have more than a single code for representing a given data. Uh, we, we will do the coding for the following information types, the numeric ones and the non-numeric ones. So for the numeric and non-numeric, we have slightly different considerations. For the numeric type of information, the code that we are going to use should represent range of data which is needed. So depending on the range of the data that we need, we should use a specific type of the code, let's say. Yeah? And then it's very desirable to represent data such that simple, straightforward computation, some arithmetic operations, are permitted. So without complicating indeed the situation, we need to have the code developed or assigned in a way that simple arithmetic operations are could be performed. And there should be a tight relation to binary numbers. For the non-numeric code, we have greater flexibility because we are not going to perform any arithmetic operation on the code. And there is no need to have a tie between the, the code and the binary numbers. Here we have an example where we have the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet associated with some binary code. So here we have seven elements yeah, in total. We have seven elements that we are going to assign them some code. And those code, as you can see here, should be unique for that specific element. So red is represented by 0, 0, 0. And this is a unique relation. You can see that 0, 0, 0 is not used anywhere here, only once. And here as well, in terms of the colors, red is used only once. You don't see red anymore. We have seven elements here. To represent those seven elements, three bits or three digits, three binary digits are used. So bit number zero, bit number one, and bit number two in this way. And for each color, those bits have different values generally. So in general, we can say that if we have n binary digits or n bits, we can have a binary code, which is mapping from a set of represented elements like the colors here, to a subset of 2 to the power of n binary numbers. So with n number of bits, n number of bits, we will be able to have 2 to the power of n number of codes, which means that 2 to the power of number of n elements could be represented. So this is a general, let's say, expression. And this is the case because when we have n bits, each of those bits could be either 0 or 1. Okay? And since we have n bits which, have, which could have two states or two values, let's say, not states, two values, then in total we will have 2 to the power of n number of elements. With a single bit, with one bit, for example, we can have 0 and 1. With two bits, we can have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, and it, it works like this for bigger number of n's or bigger number of bits as well. As 
I just mentioned here with n myths we can have represent up to 2 to the power of n number of elements but sometimes the number of elements that you have might be smaller than this 2 to the power of n and in that case you may still use n number of bits but represent uh, a smaller number of the elements that's also totally fine for example in the case that we have here for the representation of the colors of the rainbow we have seven elements for representing those seven elements three bits are used and with three bits we can represent up to two to the power of three or eight elements but since here we have only seven elements one code will not be used the code that is not used here is one zero zero it could have been any of the other codes that we have here but uh, arbitrarily it is chosen to be 100 so seven codes here are used out of eight possible codes to represent seven elements or seven colors of the rainbow that we have okay so having that said we can now think of the number of the bits that are required how many bits do we need in order to represent m number of the elements if we have m number of the elements to be represented by a binary code the minimum minimum number of the bits which are needed and we denote by n satisfies the following relations so m is the number of the elements and n is the number of the bits that we are going to use for representing those elements m will be between 2 to the power of n so it will be smaller than or equal to 2 to the power of n and it will be bigger than 2 to the power of n minus 1 we can now find n in this way n will be equal to seeding of x where x is equal to log 2 of m and the seeding function is defined as the integer which is greater than or equal to x so seeding of x is the integer greater than or equal to x for example seeding of 2.6 so the symbol that are used are like the inverted l Seeding of 2 to 2.x will be equal to 3. Seeding of 0 0.95 will be equal to 1. So it's the integer greater than or equal to x. That's the seeding function. And we find n the number of the bits as the number of bits that we need will be equal to seeding of log 2 of m where m is the number of the elements that we are going to represent as an example here we can find out the number of the bits that are required to, re to represent decimal digits decimal digits with a binary code are going to be represented as we know for the decimal digits we have the 0 1 2 3 up to 9 it means that m in this case will be equal to 10 we have 10 elements that needs to be represented and now we want to determine n we can refer to the formula that we have here so n will be equal to seeding of log 2 of 10 you can find the exact value for log 2 of 10 and then find the seeding or for this example alternatively you can see that we know that log 2 of 8 is equal to 3 and log 2 of 16 is equal to 4 so looking at these two we can see that log 2 of 10 will be in between these two okay so log 2 of 10 will be between log 2 of 16 and log 2 of 8 we know that this is equal to 3 this is equal to 4 
and as a result if we take the seeding function we will get seeding of log 2 of 10 will be equal to 4 so as a result to represent the decimal digits we would need to use n equal to 4 bits on the other hand we know that with n equal to 4 we can represent 2 to the power of n which is equal to 16 elements 16 elements could be represented but here we need only we, we have in it only 10 elements and as a result six elements will not be used or six number of codes not elements six codes out of 16 codes will not be used and as the codes in this example we will have since we have four bits we will have zero 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 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, down to 1, 1, 1, 1. So in total we will have 16. We would need to pick 10 of them in order to represent the decimal digits. Alright, so again, if we have n digits in radix r, there will be r to the power of n distinct elements that can be represented. And uh, for for the purpose of this course usually r for us will be equal to 2 so we'll deal with codes which are in binary and therefore r to the power of n will be 2 to the power of n and we have seen the example in the previous slide on the other hand we can represent m number of elements where m is smaller than r to the power of n and that will be totally fine as we had seen in this case yeah in the case of representing decimal digits we used four bits but with four bits we can represent up to 16 elements we just needed to represent 10 elements and as a result four of the codes will not be used here we have another example we can represent four elements in radix 2 with two digits so here number of elements m is equal to 4 r is equal to 2 and for us n will be obtained as 2 with two digits with two digits we will have 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 as the possible codes and those codes could be used to represent four elements you can think of maybe brands of cars yeah for example kia toyota bmw and hyundai they could be represented by if we have only four elements four brands to deal with then only two bits would be enough to represent all of them all right so now let's see how we can represent the alphanumeric codes there is a standard which is called as ASCII character codes and it stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange and it's widely used. It's a popular code used to represent information sent as character based data. So we are dealing with the ASCII code here. The ASCII code uses 7 bits and with 7 bits we know that we can represent 2 to the power of 7 which is 128 elements there are 94 graphic printing characters and we have 34 non-printing characters and if you add them to each other you will get 128 so with 7 bits 128 elements are represented with the ASCII code we have the non-printing characters some of them are used for the text format for example for bs for backspace or cr for the carriage return and there are other non-printing characters which are used for record making marking and flow control such as the start of the text and end of the text areas 
and we have the printable or printing characters as well. ASCII have some nice properties. That's why it has become so popular. Uh, for example, digit 0 to 9 spend the hexadecimal values 3, 0 to 3, 9. So if you want to convert 0 to 5, you just add 5 to the code as you do in the with the numeric values. For the uppercase A to Z characters, we use the 4, 1 to 5A values in the code. And for the lowercase a to z, the range of the code that is used is the 6127a. And if you compare the lowercase and uppercase values, if you want to convert from lowercase to uppercase or vice versa, what we need is just to flip the bit number 6. So we have in it here 7 bits. For the lowercase and uppercase letters, we can see that the first part of the code it means that these four bits are the same. And for the upper part, in the uppercase we have four. And if I write four here, it will be one zero zero. This is what we have for the uppercase. And for the lowercase we have six. And six is one. 110. And you can see that the difference is here. If we flip the bit number 6, this is bit number 6, we have 4 bits here, 5 bits and bit number 6. If you flip that, the lowercase and uppercase letters will be, will be translated into each other. So it's quite easy to do that kind of operation. Another popular code that is used uh, is called as the binary coded decimal or BCD. In the binary coded decimal, for each decimal digit, four bits of binary will be used. So we have here decimal value of 185. And for each digit, you can see here that four bits are used. And since for each digit we have 10 possible values, 0 to 9, that, that's indeed why for each digit 4 bits are four bits here are used. Yeah? Because we have 10 possible values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up to 9. And to represent it, those 4 bits are needed. So for each digit of the decimal value, 4 digits in the BCD code or binary code decimal are used. You should keep in mind that for the BCD code, we don't have values like this 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. These codes are not used for BCD. So if you at any point see that you have a BCD code which contains any of these uh, codes, you should see that there is a problem. And that's not a correct code. Something to keep in mind over here is to see the difference between the conversion and the coding. What we have for BCD is the code. Yeah? It's binary coded decimal. And you shouldn't mix it with the conversion of the value into the uh, decimal or binary value. As an example, here we have the decimal number 13. In the first case, you can see it's binary equivalent so 1101 is the binary equivalent of 13 and in the second case you can see the bcd code for it and since we have two digits in the bind in the decimal for the bcd code there will be eight bits used eight bits in total are used and uh, as a result you can see that it's quite different than what we have here so these two this code here and this binary number here are quite different than each other, obviously. And you should see, and it, you should know which one uh, corresponds to what. The first one will be the binary equivalent of 13, and the second one is the BCD code or binary code decimal. 
For the BCD numbers, we can perform the arithmetic operations such as addition. When we, when we want to add uh, in the uh, two numbers to each other, as an example here, we want to do the addition of 8 and 5, 8 plus 5, which will give us 13 in decimal. If you use the BCD code, since we have a single digit for each one of them, 8 and 5, the BCD code and the binary value will be the same. So 1000 0, 0, 0 for 8 and 010145. 0, 0, 0, 5. If we add them, if we use the binary addition, what we will end up with will be 1101, 1, which is the binary equivalent of 13, but it is obviously not a BCD code because the it's one of the 1101 1, 1 is here in it, and you, you see that it is an invalid BCD code. And therefore, when something like that happens, it means that we need to perform some correction, okay, if you are going to do the BCD arithmetic. And this will happen when we have the result of the addition being big, more than 9. If, if the result of the addition becomes bigger than 9, then we need to represent it by two digits, and if we put everything in a single digit, the code that we get will not be valid. To correct it, we need to add 6 to the resulting number. And you can see how it is done here. So 1000 0, 0, 0 plus 0101 0, 1 gives us 1101. 1, 1. If we add 6 to it, plus 0, 1, 1, 0, which is 6, then the result will be 1 as a carry, 0, 0, 1, 1. And we can see that for the as for the first digit of the result, we already have 3. So we have 3 for the first digit, and we have a carry out, which means that it needs to be who add, to be added to the next uh, digit position, yeah, let's say. And since here we have nothing in the upper digit position, it will appear just there, so it will be added to zero, and as a result, we will have 0, 0, 0, 0001 and 0, 0, 0011. 1. So this will be 1 and 3, it means that we will have two digits with 1 and 3, which represents the 8 plus 5. So it's a BCD, it's a valid BCD code in it. So why do we need to add 6? Because if we add 6 to, to the result of the sum, it will be equivalent to subtracting 10 from it. And in this case, we will get the, the single digit that we want to have, and then uh, carry out will be added to the next level. So in general, if the digit sum is bigger than 9, we need to add 1 to the next significant digit. And for the digit itself, we would need to, to subtract 10. And the whole thing could be performed by adding 6 to the result. The next code that we are going to discuss here is called the gray code. For the gray code, the same number of the bits are used as we as we have for the binary code. Here you can see it for the decimal uh, numbers 0 to 7. Three bits are used 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 up to 1, 1, 1. So we have seven elements here, which eight elements here, which could be represented by three bits. As for the gray code, the code will be slightly different than the binary code. The main difference here is that for the gray code, if we go from one number to the next one, if we go from 0 to 1, and then from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and so on and so forth, only one bit will change its value. For example, if you go from 0, which has the code of 0, 0, 0, to 1, which has the code of 0, 0, 1, only the last bit changes its value. So this is similar for what we have for the binary code up to here. But then if we go from 1 to 2, when we change from 1 to 2, if we do this, you can see that here now the code is different. So for 1, we have 0, 0, 1. 
and then for 2 for representing 2 we have 0 1 1 which is different than what we have for the binary code for the binary code we'll have 0 1 0 and 2 bits in this case will change their value so 2 bits the first bit and second bit will change their value while in the case of gray code only one bit which is the middle bit changes its value and similarly if we go from 2 to 3 in the case of binary code we have only one change then from 3 to 4 there is there are three changes three bits all three bits have changed their value while in the case of gray code we always have a single bit changing its value even from 7 to 0 we have 100 zero zero, and then we have 000, zero, zero only one bit changes its value but again keep in mind that this is the code gray code it's different than the binary value that we have for a given number so that's the main property of the gray code if we move from one uh, number one decimal number to the next one from one to two from two to three to three to four and so on and so forth only a single bit will change its value and this will be helpful in some situations one example of using the bcd of the gray code using the gray code is the optical shaft encoder let's see how does the shaft encoder works and how using the gray code helps us in order to reduce the possible errors in the reading here you can see the structure of a shaft encoder for the shaft encoder indeed we have a disk which is attached to a motor and it is rotating clockwise or counterclockwise depending on the way that the motor is turning so we have the the disk like this attached to the shaft of a motor and rotating with it and there are slots on the shaft encoder in the example that we have here the shaft encoder is divided into several segments so we have eight segments in it and each segment itself is also divided into three parts on one side of the shaft encoder we will have light source so let's say on this side we have the light source and on the other side of the shaft encoder we will have the receivers so if you look from the front and if you assume that this is the the encoder so we will have the light source here light source which will emit light continuously and on the other hand on the other side of the encoder we will have the light receiver or sensors which will receive the light or they might not receive the light depending on the the situation on how the shaft encoder is located as you can see here for the shaft encoder there will be the the, the sections that we have there might be transparent like the parts which are shown with the white color here and I'm highlighting they might be transparent or they might be opaque like the ones in black or in blue here so if uh, the sensor is in front of a transparent part it will read the light it will give us one if it's in front of an opaque part it will give us zero so that's how the in the, uh, the shaft encoder works and then depending on the code that we receive from the sensors and here we will have three bits we can receive for example one one zero or zero one one or zero 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 depending on the code that we receive we can say that the shaft encoder has this position on and as a result the motor has that position but now let's see how the gray code could be useful in this case yeah what you see here in the in the picture for part a we have the binary code for positions 0 to 7 
So here we have one position. If we receive the code from the sensors, we will have 0, 0, 0 because you can see that the whole part is whole sections, three sections that we have for this part are opaque and as a result, no light will be received by the sensors. Then for the next part, we have two of the segments opaque and one segment is transparent. So the code that we receive will be 0, 0, 1 and so on and so forth. On the other hand, we have the gray code used here for position 0 to 7. And you can see that similarly for the binary code case, for the first position, all segments are opaque. So 0, 0, 0 is received. For the second one, it's also similar. But then for the third one, the code that we receive will be 0, 1, 1. And then for the Fourth one, we will have 0, 1, 0. So these codes will be received. But how this could be a useful thing for us? Yeah? So now I hope you know how the shaft encoder works. Now let's see what we will get for the binary code when we have the shaft position lying between codes for 3 and 4. So let's go back here. Code 3 is here code 4 is here and if the the shaft encoder lies in this area that I'm highlighting or maybe let me draw it if it lies in this area exactly the codes that we might receive will be like this so we can start with this we, we may receive 0 1 1 if it lies slightly towards the third segment we may receive zero from here one from here and zero from here we may receive zero from here then zero from from the second bit zero one one we may receive zero one zero and we may receive 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 1, 1 is already considered. Uh, I guess I just missed it. So let me check it again. So 0, 1, 1 is what we get from here. Then we may get 0, 1, 0. Then we may get 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is 0, 0, 1 indeed. And we may get 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So all the combinations indeed could be received in this case. So this is redundant. So 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, yes. And also 0, 0, 0. We may receive all 0 as well. Okay. And on the other hand, we may receive all 1s. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. As the other options. So indeed, we, we would uh, most likely receive any of the 8 possible cases. So 1, 1, 1 0, 0 here as well. So we may, we may receive any of these four depending on where exactly we have the shaft located and it might be slightly, very slightly towards one side. If we check the situation for the gray code, if we say that we may have the shaft here in this position, let's see what are the possible codes that we might receive. So starting from G0. So here you can see that for both cases, we have 0. Then for the second bit, always we have 1. And then for the third bit, only we have two options. We may receive 0, 1, 0, or we may receive 1, 1, 0. But any of them that we read will be a valid code. If we, if we read from sensor 010, 0, 0, 
it means that we are in the third we are in this segment in there we are in this part if we receive one one zero it means that we are in this part and both of them are correct yeah we might be just transit in the transition mode but while in the case of binary code if we receive zero one one it will be okay so zero one one will be fine if we receive one zero zero so one zero zero it will be also fine but then if we receive for example zero 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 it means that we read that we are in this position and you can see that it is totally incorrect or if we receive 0 1 0 it means that we are here and that's also incorrect so you can see that with the with the usage of the gray code for the shaft encoder or the optical shaft encoder we can uh, indeed reduce the the amount of the errors that we might face compared to using the binary code in terms of the reading of the position of the shaft all right so i think that's all for this video uh, i hope you have learned about the binary coding how different codes could be used the number of the bits that you, you would need in order to represent a given number of the elements and you have seen that specific coding for even for the binary for the decimal numbers might be useful in specific situations that's why there are multiple types of the codes for for the same indeed decimal numbers thank you for watching and see you in the next video later bye for now